Let's go to Calgary and talk to a British Columbian, longtime British Columbian. Jay Hill, of course, was a conservative MP for the federal riding of Prince George Peace River, born a Braidway up there in Fort St. John, BC's northeast corner. And Jay, we've been saying all along on this show, I mean, I'm here in Ottawa, you're in Calgary tonight, but for the rest of the country, for Alberta, for BC, this is an important election. And today we kind of found out one of the reasons why, and that's pipeline politics. Adrian Dix doesn't want more tanker traffic out of Vancouver. We know he's dead set against Northern Gateway. And uh, everybody knows BC is an important port for stuff coming off the prairies, coming from the rest of the, uh, Canada. Well, that's right, uh, David. And I think what we'll see as a result of the announcement today in, uh, about the expansion of the Kinder Morgan line, which is an existing pipeline that's been around for, I think, about 25 years. Uh, that transports oil from Alberta down to Vancouver and the tankers go out of, uh, out of the port of Vancouver. I think what we're going to see is that uh, there's going to be increased interest in Keystone. Obviously, there's a continued push by the federal government and the government of Alberta to see uh, President Obama approve uh, the Keystone line that would go south to uh, Texas and also renewed or increased interest in a line uh, to transport uh, oil eastward. And obviously we've got to find some way to get uh, oil to the coast of uh, the west coast of our country, uh, either down and through uh, the northern states or perhaps up through Alaska. But there has to be some way to access that growing market in Asia. Uh, the Premier, Christy Clark, was up in your old neck of the woods, up in peace country uh, last week. Give me your sense why you thought she was there. I thought that was also... Uh it's significant for a few, rings, a few reasons. It's, it's stressed uh, her idea that resource development is very important, particularly LNG. But also, I wondered, is not this not a, a part of the province that she should be doing well in in any event? And in a short campaign, I'm curious why she'd want to spend time up there. Well, I think that uh, somewhat unusually, uh, David, uh, the writing of the North piece uh, that area, that uh, triangular area up in northeastern British Columbia that's on the east side of the Rocky Mountains that used to represent about half of my federal riding constitutes two provincial ridings, the North and South Peace. I think they're going to do very well, the Liberals, in holding uh, the South Peace riding. Uh, they're running a candidate there, mayor, um, the, the former mayor of Dawson Creek, Mike Bernier. I think Mike's going to do well. In the North piece, uh, there's a fellow by the name of Pat Pym that's uh, been an MLA now for, I believe, one term since 2009. And um, there was an independent that ran in the last election, uh, gave Pat some, some trouble. And uh, my understanding is, is that all the polling is showing that that riding is too close to call. So while they've traditionally been right of center uh, ridings up in the Peace River country in northern BC, uh, that might change in this election, and uh, as I say, the pollsters are suggesting that the North piece is too close to call. I must confess uh, that the independent that ran last time and is running again this time is a cousin of mine, so I might <laughs> not be the most unbiased source uh, to comment on that race up there. I, I don't think I'm putting any words in your, in my, in your mouth, though, and I, but I suggest that you, you are not rooting for Adrian Dix and the NDP here. You're rooting for Christy Clark's Liberals and not your old caucus colleague, John Cummins and the Conservatives. That's right. Uh, I have been uh, outspoken in the past, uh, since my retirement from federal politics two and a half years ago, in support of Christie and the BC Liberals, because I do believe that it's the best option for the future of British Columbia. Well, give me your sense at the end of week one. I know you're doing that. Stockwell Day, of course, your former colleague, is, is uh, trying to help Christie along. I think Jim Abbott has been on some radio ads, your former colleague as well, uh, down the Kootenays. Um, give me your sense of, of, uh, of how you think the first week has gone from both sides. Well, I think it's pretty much a draw would be my assessment, and that's not good news for the Liberals. Uh, the polling has consistently shown that they're trailing badly uh, going into the election to the writ drop. As you know, they tried for the last couple of years since Christie took the helm to try and narrow that gap in the polls uh, prior to the actual election campaign. Uh, consistently, the polls show that did not happen. And so they've got a huge uphill uh, battle uh, over the five-week campaign. At the end of week one, David, uh, the campaign is 20% over. And uh, the, quite frankly, the Liberals have got to show momentum. Uh, that's that key word that we all know is so important in a campaign, momentum. And uh, they're not showing it yet. And uh, the next big chance, I believe, is the, del uh, the debates between the four leaders. Uh, my understanding is, is the first one will be on radio this Friday and then a week from today will be the so important uh, televised debate. 
And uh, Christy has a tremendous amount of pressure on her to show that um, she can reverse this consistent polling that shows her tra uh, trailing badly behind Adrian Dix in, um, in the views of British Columbians as to who would make the best mm -hmm. premier. And that key issue about leadership is going to have to, have to be addressed uh, through those debates, I believe. So uh, we're, as I say, the campaign is one-fifth over already. I don't imagine, I haven't seen any recent polls, but I don't imagine there's been a, a real narrowing. Uh, there's been some controversial issues that have been dealt with. But there hasn't been anything, in my estimation, that's grabbed the attention of the B.C. voters. And uh, the Liberals especially need that to happen, and they need to ha it to happen soon and create some momentum. Uh, Christy Clark has seized on debt-free B.C. is one of the lines we often hear. And I'm not sure that's an issue that really gets people too excited, particularly when you've got a 10-year record of the B.C. Liberals. They haven't exactly been worrying about the debt very much over that last decade. Well, the problem I see for the Liberals on a lot of these issues, David, is that the, in many areas the policies are indistinguishable. Uh, while Christie has ad addressed some of her issues of her base by trying to ensure that she still appeals to the right, uh, the right spectrum of her party's base in order to combat John Cummins and the Conservative parties. Adrian Dix, I think, has very strategically moved his party to the center. And uh, that has resulted, in my opinion, in, in both parties having very similar policies on a lot of issues. And so it's going to be very difficult for the Liberals to distinguish themselves. I mean, even on the issue of Northern, Northern Gateway, where the where the uh, NDP have been so adamantly opposed to that even before they get the results of the, the National Energy Board hearings. Uh, the government, the BC Liberals, have been uh, saying, well, we're going to wait and see what the report is, which is a responsible way to approach it, I believe. Uh, but nevertheless, it doesn't create a clear difference, you know, where the voters can understand you're going to vote for this and get economic activity and good paying jobs, et cetera, et cetera, or you can vote for this and stop the oil, uh, the delivery of oil through a west coast port because you're concerned about the environment, potential env environmental impact. So there's no clear differentiation in the, uh, many of the policies. Jay Hill in Calgary tonight. We're going to check in with Jay a little later on in the campaign. Thanks so much for this though, Jay. Appreciate it. My pleasure, David.